Hello there everyone. Today we're going to read Cluck O'Clock, written by Kess Gray and illustrated by Mary McQuillan. It's four o'clock in the morning. Another day is dawning. Colin the rooster puffs out his chest, ready to do what he doodle doos best. 402. We open our eyes, fluffle our feathers and watch the sun rise. 415. We stretch out our wings, jump from our perch to see what the day brings. 5 o'clock. The farmer appears with toast in his hand and soap round his ears. 505. He unlocks the door, rattles his bucket, throws corn on the floor. We gobble our breakfast in 10 seconds flat. Jessie's the fastest. That's why she's so fat. Six until eight, we sit on our nests. We lay white eggs or brown eggs. Marge does requests. Just after eight, we leave the hen coop and stroll round the farmyard, all in one group. From nine until ten, we go our own ways. The dust bath is Frieda's. The hopscotch is Faye's. Eleven o'clock, we meet by the plough, squabble and squawk about what to do now. If the tractor's been busy, we might hunt for worms. Big ones, little ones, anything that squirms. Twelve o'clock, we sit in the trees, ambush some caterpillars, lace wings and bees. Twelve twenty-five, we practice our clucks, tell a few jokes and poop on the ducks. 102. We walk down the lane. One for the exercise, two to see Jane. Jane is the blackbird who lives in the hedge. She has a family of four and a husband called Reg. Jane is an expert on earwigs and slugs. She knows where to find the tastiest bugs. Two o'clock, we play hide and seek. Valerie should learn to tuck in her beak. Three o'clock, we lie on our backs. We make shapes in the clouds and then we make tracks. Four o'clock, we're back in the yard. Wally the collie is standing on guard. Call him a guard dog, he's totally useless. Woofless, furless and totally toothless. 4.15 we go to the stable to visit the horses, Molly and Mabel. 4.30 till 5 we perch in the rafters, watch them eat tea and hope for some afters. 6 o'clock it's our turn again, a fistful of scraps, a beakful each hen. 7 o'clock we form a long line and wait for the farmer to give us the sign. When he jangles the keys from inside his pocket, points to the hen house and bangs on his bucket, we race to the coop in 58th gear. Last one in gets a toe up the rear. Last to their perch is a big rotten egg. Anne isn't playing, she's got a bad leg. The farmer locks up and goes in for tea. It smells like pork chops and gravy to me. 7.30, we're ready for bed. No one is tired, so we natter instead. 8 o'clock, the sun starts to fade. The hen house grows darker. Light turns to shade. 9 o'clock, the farmer shows up with hot milky coffee in his favourite blue cup. He rattles our door and checks all the locks. We sit on our perch and wait for the fox. The fox is called Olga. She lives in the woods. She eats chickens for supper. She'd eat us if she could. Brenda starts fidgeting at 20 to 10. Any time now will be fox time again. At 10.57 we all hear a sound. Something is sniffing and snuffling around. The noises are coming from the farmhouse back door. 
Bin bags are spilling out onto the floor. Tin cans are clanking. Pork bones are cracking. Sharp teeth are crunching. Olga is snacking. The farmer is sleeping. He doesn't hear her. But we can hear sounds getting nearer and nearer. Meters or centimeters, it's too dark to tell. But Olga is close, we can tell by the smell. Colin stays calm and jumps to the floor, just to the left of the crack in the door. Through the hole in the wood, he wiggles his feather, very kindly donated by Heather. He wiggles it, jiggles it, and now you'll see why. When he takes it away, it's replaced by an eye. It's greedy, it's beady, it's nasty and vulgar. It's starey and scary, it's definitely Olga. Before Olga can blink, Colin scoops up some dirt and cops her an eyeful right where it hurts. Olga runs off with a flea in each ear. That'll teach her to come sniffing round here. It's 12 o'clock midnight, everyone's yawning. Time for some sleep, only four hours till morning. <laughs>